Okay, we're back here at the Fluent Conference live in San Francisco, yeah. wrapping up day two and wrapping up the conference here. O'Reilly Media's Fluent Conference has been a big success. It's all about the developers and really about three things, the web, the web, and the web, and making it <laughs> faster. Uh, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from our noise. It's our first Fluent Conference. Uh, we're not new to the developer community, but we've been following. This conference has been fantastic. It's been the explosion of JavaScript taking to the next level. But really, it's more important about the developers, it's about the user experiences, and it's about scaling and, and, and letting developers be more productive uh, in this exploding modern era of software development, software engineering, and also user experience. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick, and the co-chair of Fluent Conference is Simon St. Laurent. Welcome back to theCUBE. This is actually your show. We interview at Strata, but uh, welcome to theCUBE at your event. Great, thank you very much. We had Simon on earlier at the, uh, the kick it off, but you, you're you're wrapping it up so you're tired, and so we respect your time, but we want, <laughs> but we want to get your take on it. I mean, obviously, you've, you've very big success. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and developer conferences are, are, to me, are judged by the amount of hype that's at the event, and there's not a lot of hype here, it's just all real, good, solid developers. What's your take on how it went, and what were the key findings during this show? Well, I think, I think it went really well. The, the fun of working in JavaScript is that there are actually multiple audiences, so there are developers, but then there are lots of different categories of developers, some of them more enthusiastic about JavaScript than others, some of them deeper into kind of broader web technologies. So it's all about making all of those different pieces come together. Uh, we, you know, we had content for lots of different kinds of people. It's easy to do in a multi-track conference. Um, a lot of it's figuring out, you know, what sparkly bits will draw people to, con to, the, to the sessions and what solid content will actually keep them there. The sparkly bits, I like that. What's the biggest <laughs> thing that you, what's the biggest surprise from this event? Obviously, we'll talk about more of the, 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 the meat and potatoes here, but what's a big surprise for you in this event? There's always the, the um, twist and turn. Well, there was the session where the presenters were having themselves electroshocked if any time they said, um. <laughs> 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 and that the audience response to that was incredibly positive. Um, and they were using JavaScript to do it, which made it even crazier. Um, that I mean, was, you're talking about the device, that the USB device was plugged directly yeah. into the, to the computer where you're controlling the hardware. Yes, yeah, that, that was just surprising behavior. That's without um, Lombardo in, tro in, uh, in trouble at Stanford, if I recall, a similar uh, type of experiment. Yes, yes. <laughs> or Lombardo, um, excuse me. I, I don't think we want to do this on a regular basis no. in all of our talks. Um, beyond that, uh, the, the biggest surprise was actually the conversations in the hallways and how well they came together. Um, I was pretty confident in the program itself with the usual, you know, Will people get to the right kind of session for them? Are they going to go to the right level? How are presenters going to adapt to an audience? Um, but I was really incredibly excited about some of the conversations I kind of walked through, walked by, heard at lunch. Uh, people taking the content from the sessions and saying, you know, I liked this because it applied to me this way. Uh, people actually getting into even people kind of arguing because you know they'd seen things differently or came from a different place. It just, it really made the conference a whole lot richer. And the program you put together gives some color into the, uh, to the core elements you were focusing on this year. Obviously, JavaScript is, is, is exploding, mm -hmm. has legacy to it. So, you know, there's always going to be <laughs> religious arguments, I should say, about mm -hmm. what it could or couldn't be. Um, we heard quotes, uh, JavaScript's the assembly language of the browser. And obviously, Firefox made some announcements here. Chrome uh, OS is no surprise to us uh, watching what's going on with Chrome. What were the key things that you focused in on this year? Well, there were, the, the, the key things that we really wanted to get were the JavaScript language, the kind of explosion of frameworks, which is just continuous. I mean, there was a framework announced two weeks ago that I would have loved to have here. It's, it's tricky to get that in. Um, the other thing that we've been trying to do is broaden the reach of the conference so that includes more of the design people who have to talk with developers and who have to work with programmers but might, might not be that deeply interested in prototypal inheritance and event asynchronous programming. So we were really striving for a balance. We wanted to make sure that all of those different groups of people had places to go, things to see. Um, the announcements were great. Uh, it was really Brendan Eich bringing up the the first person shooter game that was written in other languages and compiled to JavaScript and running incredibly smoothly uh, was 
Very well received. Big round of applause on that one. I was in yes. that one. Yes, actually it was startling how good it was. <laughs> I, I didn't really believe that was possible, and if you'd asked me a year ago if I would see anything like that, I would have said no, but we're there. Jeff, what's your take on the program? Because you've come into this, you know a lot about what's going on on the business side, and the enterprise and developer. But you were you kind of, it was your first time exposed to the fluent commerce. What was your take? Yeah, I mean, again, I, we've had a great theme of this really transformative period in time. And, you know, I've been in the Valley since I moved here about 85. And, you know, mm -hmm. we've gone through a number of waves. And, and you know, the, the most recent one was all just about kind of consumer and fun and and, and they were the, they turned out to be the hyperscale guys. I always wondered, did they start out that way or did they kind of grow into it? And I remember the first time Google was like, come on, the browser wars are over and, and uh, you know, the switching costs are zero. So it is exciting to see the marriage of, of the big global trends that we're seeing with socialization and, and really mobile, I think, is just phenomenal. And the opportunity for people to really rethink the way they're doing things. And then, and then again, this, this, this notion of the citizen developer, and mm -hmm. even with some of the recent editorial is coming out that everyone needs to learn to develop and then now to come here and I'm not a developer um, I'm, an, I'm an app user for sure but to, to hear now that there's the tool sets and, and really the infrastructure in place to enable folks uh, to really start to embrace and to be able to really deliver their visions to be able to execute new applications where before I think the the hurdle rate was much harder that the baseline infrastructure was much more difficult the cost and and what you had to do to get to the point of actually implementing what you were trying to do was so much further so I think it's it's exciting you know what, what I love about these conferences is that people are working I mean for the folks at home, it is quiet as a church mouse out here. I mean, everyone is in the sessions. They're in the sessions. Well, they're learning. They're sharing ideas. In the hallways. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, they're 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 working. And then and then in between, everybody's out and and people are sitting around tables and actually you know coding yeah. coding together. And of course, I love the startups. Yeah. I love startups. I mean, so, so some of my uh, notes here on the uh, conference I'll share with you since uh, you're kind of chilling out. Mm -hmm. I want to relax and share <laughs> what, we've, what the knowledge we've acquired that we've shared and extracted and shared to the audience. One is. Um, um, obviously, the Fluent Conference itself, the conversations and the, the mm -hmm. content was fantastic. Um, the notion that JavaScript has solidly solidified itself as legitimate software engineering para paradigm. I mean, this is not just a you know kiddie script or go do some web design stuff. This mm -hmm. is like the real deal. Node reinforces that, and obviously, stuff going on, on the database side. People are making friends here. I mean, I saw mm -hmm. a lot of commentary on Twitter um, using the hashtag making friends and people talking, I see people connecting, maybe debating, as you said, yes. <laughs> from a position that they've come from. Um, and then just real life code examples was another comment we saw mm -hmm. and we're hearing. So um, the geek girls, the code for women for code was another highlight that was pretty positive. Um, uh, obviously, the normal talk about GitHub and what that does for Agile. So all that stuff was really kind of what we've heard. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you saw this, heard well, the same thing. Yeah, we've, we've one of the things we've figured out last year was that there were a lot more enterprise people coming to this than we'd expected. Uh, being sort of San Francisco, having a startup showcase, we were focusing more on that. And this year, we had like yet more enterprise people not necessarily seeking enterprise content. What, we, what we're finding is, and I think Bill Scott did a lot of this in his keynote, is that people are turning to the web stack because it's actually an easier place to get things done than the traditional enterprise stack. And so we're seeing a shift, a very, well, it's kind of slow and then sudden and then slow again, uh, movement of people across from what used to be kind of the enterprise community and we have this set of values. Um, and the web community was very separate. I mean, there were intersections, but they weren't Well, the web tight. was the web was a you know basement organization initially when the yes. corporations get the literature right, on there, right. self-service, get some information out there, reduce, some direct, forms. reduce your right. direct mail costs, et cetera, et cetera. That was the beginning in the 90s, but now it's a it's a legitimate business drive. We see that at Strata and other things. Right. But I think what's interesting about the enterprise is, is that, and we were talking about this in theCUBE, is the mainframe days, everyone had in-house developers. We used to call it spaghetti code or you know, COBOL, or whatever was out there. But then that became more prepackaged software that, you know, obviously the rest of history, Oracle, SAP, uh, networking, 3Com, Cisco. But now we're going back and we're seeing at the CUBE events that we've done in the past, there is a resurgence and transmission for in-house development in mm -hmm. enterprises. And that's new, and that's not new, new, but it's like a new increase in transformation where 
they've been getting cut. Right. And IT's been cut to the bone, do more with less, but now there's an investment thesis saying, hey, let's drive business value. Yeah. And the and the LAMP stack and the web stack and web scale, companies have done shown them some new tools. And that to me is driving a lot of and, and, and the web players are forcing their hand. I mean, I think one of the most fascinating is the Amazon Web Services where uh, mm -hmm. that service now is forcing internal IT staffs to act like they're Amazon to compete face to face to have branding and you know to keep the guy from going to shadow IT. So this whole re resurgence in the enterprise, learning lessons from what were, you know, kind of traditional web companies that have now grown to hyperscale and really shown what you can do with these tools is fascinating. It's really an exciting time as the enterprises are starting to ad uh, adopt this yeah, stuff. Yeah, Simon, I want to get your comments on that and, you know, to do, do a little drill down on some of those things we're finding. Also, we heard from developers here and also in the hallways around, you know, what are the challenges for JavaScript? Obviously, standardization is a big thing. And, yes. and again, that's been kicked around, it's has some legacy, but you know, the comments about a RESTful API is oh, yes. really a big deal, right? So that was one that's going to enable. The second thing we're seeing is this, this kind of general purpose platforms using REST APIs and other, other tool links, to build tool links to support whatever IDE people are using, or whatever you know, languages, Ruby, you know, whatever you're using, .NET, Ruby, whatever. So depending on what you're programming is now independent, you can do that stuff. And then new things like um, Angular was very popular. Um, and you know, not much talked about the conference, but we're hearing WebSockets is really becoming something that's much more focused attention on because of mm -hmm. the, the Firefox announcement and you know the browser OS. <laughs> this is an OS, it's native browser code. JavaScript applications yes. are a real deal. What's your take on all that? Do you well, agree with that? And oh, yeah. Can you yeah, expand I mean, more color? Ja some... I mean, JavaScript started out as, you know, you could change the text in the status box. That was really exciting in 1996 to me, I think. Um, <laughs> at this point, you know, Mark Andreessen said long ago about the browser becoming the operating system, and this provoked all kinds of uh, browser wars, firestorms. But he was right. Um, and it's, it's not just the, the browser as the big window on the web that's becoming the, uh, the operating system. It's that the web is percolating into every corner of your devices. Uh, things like WebSockets let you have kind of continuous small communication on a different model than, than we started with. Uh, the, the web approach is pretty much percolating into everything that, that programmers have typically done. There are still places where it's not appropriate. I'm not going to tell you know somebody who's writing a device driver to go do it in JavaScript. Uh, there, there's C for that. And there are cases where you want something that's really, really hardened and you know functional programming languages might be a better choice for that. But for broad general purpose programming and especially you know interfaces and things that are connecting to user interfaces, JavaScript is becoming the default in a lot of cases. And web technologies, even if you're using other programming languages, are, well, just growing like kudzu in places that used to house mainframes. So what's next? So obviously there's a lot of headroom. Okay, there's a lot of stuff with I.O., with Node, and that's been fairly popular. What's next? What, what's on the horizon for you guys content-wise and then within the community? Well, I'm really feeling at this point like there's a, a major change about to happen in the web, and I'm not entirely certain what it is, so it's a little tricky to say. Um, but we've kind of, with, with Ajax, we saw this, this pattern where the web seemed like it was very quiet, the browser wars were over, there wasn't much happening, and then Jesse James Garrett says, there's this way we can do things, and these tools have been here for a while. And suddenly Ajax exploded onto the scene and the web became a very much more important interface than it had been for, for a while. And I think we're going to see something similar. We've had this explosion of technologies, this explosion of techniques, and we haven't fully digested what they're going to be good for. HTML5 has given us all of these different APIs and people are putting them together in different combinations but we're just on the edge of figuring out what we can really do. We're still in the kicking the tires phase. We're doing a lot of great prototyping. There's a lot of experiments happening. But as far as how the big picture all comes together, we're, we're just getting there. Um, I think there's a lot we can do with kind of communications between developers and designers that's going to change. I think the RESTful APIs and hypermedia are a really critical piece of this. Uh, the, 
code is kind of becoming independent of where it, where it came from. And the web really makes that happen a lot faster. Um, I really liked what you were saying about in-house developers. We're making IT maybe go further away, but at the same time, we can bring in programmers to build code that's really for us, that's really specific to what we want to do in a particular project. So the dynamics are changing on business levels, on technology levels. I, I really want to know where we're going to be next year. And I, I see change, but I'm not sure which change yet. The good news is positive change would be the Velocity Conference, which is under the covers. That's the yes. engine and the obviously Strata making use of the data. And you know the beautiful thing about having in-house developers that have standards-based programming mm -hmm. like open source, LAMP stack and web stack is that you know, there's good investment, there's good leverage. I mean, so they can create agile programming, which is known methodology mm -hmm. on mobile and web, and still deliver business value. And that's the conversation we're hearing in the enterprise. And the beautiful thing about it is, the stuff that we're hearing here that you put together are from those web scale companies now being referred to as hyperscale. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing hyperscale in the enterprise, DevOps, you're seeing that convergence where developers can take advantage of those things and be faster, more productive, more efficiency. So very cohesive separation, but yet coupled nicely together on, on uh, environments. So I think you hit, hit the home run here. Simon, thanks for Great. going on theCUBE, and thanks for having us. Uh, congrats, and congrats on a, congrats on a very conference. successful program. <laughs> great. Um, great attendance, good, good commentary. And, and we'll be right back with our wrap up here on day two after this short break. Um, Simon, the uh, co-chair of the Fluent Conference, Simon Saint Laurent, we'll be back with our next guest after this short break.